This is the fourth in a series of videos called Why I Love Premiere Pro, or why you should be using Premiere Pro to edit your videos. In this one, I'm gonna be talking about effects. And one of the really, really strong reasons why I switched to Premiere was because of the built-in effects and the things that you could do to footage, specifically warp stabilizing footage. So if it's really shaky and you wanna lock it down and make it look like it's not moving, or at least moving less, and doing things like color correcting and some built-in audio effects. So I'm gonna show you some of the ones that I use all the time and why I think you should be using Premiere just based on these alone. So let's dive into it. First up, we have Warp Stabilizer. And Warp Stabilizer basically takes shaky footage, analyzes how every single pixel moves, and tries to figure out the best way to make it not as shaky to stabilize the footage. So if you're hand-holding your video or you don't have uh, image stabilization on your lens, this is a tool that can really help with this. When I was using Final Cut Pro 10, it did an okay job. It really made things look really warped a lot of the time. And even if you played with the little dials, you couldn't get it as good as Premiere can get it. And even Premiere isn't quite as good as taking a shot into After Effects and having After Effects analyze it. And that takes way longer, but if it's a really important shot and it's really shaky and you really need it to be stabilized, maybe taking it into After Effects and then bringing it right back into Premiere is what you need to do. But here are a few examples of what Warp Stabilizer looks like. So I'm in the Effects workspace here. I have some footage that I shot when we were over in uh, Ireland. And this first shot here, I'll go ahead and play it full screen here and make sure that warp stabilizer is off. Go ahead and go bigger here and you can see how shaky this is. I was literally just holding a 5D Mark III with a lens and seeing what I could get with the shot. So it's pretty shaky there. You can see some rain, it was windy. I was standing on a slanted slope and I did the best I could to get the shot of my wife taking a picture of this house. But it is a little shaky. So let's go ahead and if you go into the effects section of Premiere, you can type warp and it'll show up under video effects and distort warp stabilizer. And you would just drag this on your clip. I've already done it here, but I've just deactivated it. So let me go ahead and turn that on. And when you add this to a clip, what Premiere does is it analyzes the clip. So there'll be a little progress bar here. And I went ahead and did that before I didn't record in this video just to save some time, but it will analyze the clip to just look at where everything is moving and everything is changing. And then as you go through, you have a bunch of different options for what you can do. The first one is smooth or no motion. So smooth motion will just take whatever motion there is already in the camera being moved around while filming and it will lessen it. No motion is basically like putting the camera that you shot handheld or however you shot it and locking it down on a tripod. So I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. Next is smoothness. And this is basically how much are you letting the software do to stabilize the footage. I hate leaving it at the default value of 50 because if you have it that high, it starts to look fake and you get a lot more of the warping that you'll see here in a second. Next is method. And with method, it's what you're allowing the software to do to the image to actually stabilize it. So position is simply Think of the video shot as a plane, like a piece of paper or like a mouse pad. And all it will do is it will move it on the plane that it's already on. Next is position, scale, and rotation. So position would be moving it, scaling it would be making this image bigger and smaller, and rotation would be turning it, still on that same plane. Perspective, now it's going to start tilting the image in 3D space, not just in a 2D plane, to get the image that you want. And subspace warp means it's doing all of those things and it's kind of folding it in ways. And that's sometimes how you can get the best results, but it also can make it look really funky. So let's take a look at what my image looks like right now at 10%. So let me go ahead and make this a little bigger. And I'll go ahead and turn off warp stabilizer and we'll watch it again. So kind of shaky. Now let me go back to the beginning. Let me turn on warp stabilizer at 10%. And this is not with subspace warp. This is, I believe, just with, just with position scale and rotation. So none of the crazy 3D stuff. And let's watch it. 
and it's better, and you do maybe start to see some kind of warping around the building, and the biggest issue with stabilizing is the more layers and the more depth you have in something, the more of that warping you're gonna get because there's so much that Premiere is trying to do. But if you're shooting a single object that's on a, a, a pretty basic table or backdrop or something like that, you, you can get better results with stabilization. But let's just, just for the sake of showing you, let's take this to 50. It's gonna have to stabilize it a little bit again. And let's now watch what it looks like at 50%. Now it's start to getting kind of wobbly, getting kind of distorted. And you can start to see really at the beginning here, this, this, uh, this road here next to the house gets really funky. It starts warping and giving you that 3D effect. So that's not something you want, which is why I always go for subtle when I'm doing warp stabilization, just trying to minimize that shake a little bit. Now let's go over to this shot. This shot is of a horse here. Let's go ahead and Turn off warp stabilizer. And I believe I used an IS lens here, but let's go ahead and start at the beginning. You can see there's a little bit of a jitter, which I don't I don't mind movement. It's when I like shook a little bit or I was shaking because it was freezing or something. That's what I don't want. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on warp stabilizer and I have it at about 30%. So 30% warp here. Let's see if that fixed issue. We'll go to the beginning of the clip. And you can see that's pretty good. You might get a little bit of distortion here in the background and there was a little bit of a warp at that point, but I could take a point where it's pretty steady into out right there, let's say, where there's not much distortion and there's not much movement now. And let's, that was with no motion on. So it was like tripod locked down. If I change it to smooth, stabilize it again for a second, let it calculate. Then we can go ahead and watch it one more time. And so there's still some of that natural movement in there to make it look a little bit more realistic versus the no motion, which is lock it down on a tripod and remove all the motion. So stabilizing, it's a great feature in Premiere. I'm just gonna go over one more effect just to help prove why I like Premiere so much. And that's gonna be this color correcting feature. So if you go over to the color workspace in Premiere, you can actually use the Lumetri Color, which is a video effect you place on your clips and start making changes. So if I go to this clip here of this house, I did some color correcting. You can see here where the settings are, made it a little bit colder temperature wise, didn't change the exposure, up the contrast, lower the shadows and blacks, raised the highlights and whites to make it a little bit more dynamic and added more contrast. And you can see if I turn that on, I'm getting a much more dynamic image. Contrast, probably a little too high for me. Bring that down a little bit. But just the difference of how flat this image looks of, you know, every color is about similar and you can see over on the waveform here, everything's between about 10 and 70. If I turn this on, it's stretching it down to zero up to 80. You're getting a more dynamic image and you're getting tools like you would in Lightroom or in some other photo editing app right here alongside all your video editing. And I really like the addition of this as well as the extra things like creative where you can put different looks on that mimic different kinds of film stock as well as making it a little more faded like if it looks like film there. So now it starts to look like it was shot on film a little bit. You can make it like less sharp if you want. You can do a lot of different things with curves. You can do some vignetting if you wanna like make it a little bit more dramatic and stuff. but. I mean, you can do a lot of things in here, but just the ability to click over to these quickly and go to this and be like, uh, now it's more dynamic image because I spent some more time doing some color correcting. And these are just two effects, warp stabilizer and Lumetri color inside of Premiere. There are a ton of others. There are a lot of audio effects, video effects to do different things to your footage. And really the sky's the limit when it comes to Premiere. And when you reach the limit that is that sky, then you can go to one of their other apps like SpeedGrade or After Effects to do more things with your video editing. So really recommend Premiere Pro if you haven't tried it at all. It's not that intimidating. It looks intimidating because there are a lot of panels and buttons and everything, but I put together a free course called Premiere Pro 101 that will walk you through in five video emails that you'll get one day at a time how to start using Premiere. I'll walk through how to 
use the workspaces, how to import your footage, how to start building a sequence, sync up video and audio together, make multi-cams, starting to do some of this color correcting work, as well as what settings to use for exporting and editing a little bit faster and how to get through the first cut as quick as you can. So you can start that free course at DIYvideoguide.com slash Premiere 101. You enter your email, you'll start to get the first lesson the very first day and you'll get the next ones over the next four days. And in just under an hour, if you watch through all the videos, you'll, you'll get a grasp of what Premiere Pro entails and it'll be way less scary. So I encourage you to join that email course and there'll be one more video where I'll discuss why I like Premiere Pro so much. And then we'll be announcing the launch of our paid Premiere Pro course, the full course on someone that wants to use Premiere professionally and take their edits to the next level. So thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you another one. Cheers.